No questions. Okay. So we will start with the lecture number nine. Lah. Okay. So this one is a continuation. Um, the one that you have gone through last week, that, wa that was called unsupervised learning. So there was one question in the quiz, kan, yang, yang salah jawapan tu. So I will readjust in your marks lah. So that one is considered as bonus lah. So for lecture notes number nine, we will look into supervised learning. Uh, supervised learning is different from unsupervised learning. Okay. So last week, we, you have gone through the clustering. Uh, clustering is considered as uh, unsupervised in which we do not need to have label or predefined uh, label to indicate which class they belong to. Okay. Um, compared to the supervised learning, uh, supervised learning you require to have the data to be annotated. Annotated means you label the data. Lah. Okay. Uh, whether they be, uh, belong to class A or class B and so on. So this is how we define the um, environment for the supervised learning. Uh, supervised learning, they call it supervised because you have something that you can refer to. So for example, the label of the document. So, so we call it supervised because we have something to refer to. So we refer to the label of the document. Okay. So, um, before we can perform the classification, first what, what we need to do is we have to uh, train the model, like we perform the data modeling. So for that case, we, we need to have a training set. So this training set is used to model your data. Okay. So for your training set, uh, training set, we, we will have um, a label document um, and each document contain words, term and features. So of course the labeling of the document will depends on the content of your document here. So our task is um, we want to find a model for the label of the document as a function of the content of the document. So for example, this one, if we have a function and we look at the label of the document, so we need to define the label of the document here based on the content of the document. Okay. So uh, once we train the model, once we obtain the model, okay, so the goal is uh, given um, unseen data, okay, previously unseen document, we should be able to assign a correct class for that particular unseen document. So this is considered as new document. Lah. Okay. So the test set the test set, um, because we have the training set here, so we have another data. Uh, this is called test set. This test set is used to determine the accuracy of the model. Okay. So um, in this slide, we have the idea that whatever data we have, so for example, like this is our data. And we will divide them into uh, training and also testing. So we have train and testing. So they come from the same data, but we split the data. So for example, 
uh, 80% of the data will be used for training and 20% of the data will be used for testing. So the testing part here, we will determine how accurate is the um, model. So for example, uh, if the actual that class is, okay, let's suppose the class is belong to class number one, class number three, class number one, two, and then when we use the model, we predict that the class is one, and the class is one again, and the class is three. So based on this, we have accuracy of how many? 60 seven percent which is two out of three mapping to the right class this one is not wrong okay because in the testing um, data set we already know what is the actual label okay and this is the predicted class that produced by the model that we have if you look at the next slide uh, this one will give you a clear idea. So uh, notice that we have a label document here. So this document is labeled by human being. Like uh, we look at the document, or oh, okay, this document belong to uh, history or belong to business and so on. Okay, so initially they belong to one label data here and we split them into label, uh, training set, and test set. Okay. So we use this training set in order to perform the modeling. So the task of the modeling is we want to map, um, we want to find a function that use the label and map that document uh, based on the content that we have, the content of the document. Okay. So that is what we we want to do here. This is the training phase. Okay. So uh, for the learning al algorithm, we have so many methods. So um, it could be k nearest neighbor or it could be uh, decision tree. So um, today we will look into decision tree and also the k nearest neighbor. Okay. So for this one, we have so many options. So what we want to do is we want to take the model that we have and then we will train the model based on the input that we get from this training set. So once we have trained them, um, for example, like for the decision tree, once we have constructed the tree to indicate the um, the type of class that they have, like maybe class number one, two, one, three, and two. So this is the decision tree that we have. Or maybe um, we use the K and N. We will go over that one. So once we train them, then we we supposed to um, apply this model to this test. Okay. So we, we want to know how many uh, record or how many document can be predicted correctly by using this model. So that's why we have this test set. So always in, in any classification task, we have to have the training set and also the test set, except the K nearest neighbor, because they do not uh, perform any training, they just um, compute the distance between the unseen document and the uh, all the document that they have in the storage. Okay. So if you look at the, the formula um, for the supervised algorithm, so we highly depends on the training set. So for example, like this, um, we have the training set. Okay. 
which is a subset of your data. So that means you have your data here. This is your data. And we pick a portion of them to become the training set. Okay. So we will have a training set function. Uh, this is a training set function that will map uh, given the um, training document and also the class, we will map them to a right class. So, for example, if we have the document and also we have a class, um, we say that the document is belong to the training data set. So, we can say that our DJ is here. Okay. And this is the class label uh, that belong to a set of the super class of the class label. So um, we said we say that um, this document belong to this class and we will set them to become one. Okay. So this one says that this document belong to this class and we set to one and zero if not belong to that particular class okay so this is the training set they are pre-labeled by us by human based on the content based on the content of the document okay so for example like this is us okay you me and him given the document here and given the the class um, in this example we uh, predefined the number of classes to be three only c1 c2 c3 or we could say this is business this is history this is politics okay so given this document we will um, put them in the right class okay so um, this is what we call labeling ataupun annotating the document. So once we have the label document here, then we pass to the classifier. Okay, we train the classifier. Okay, so um, once we pass them to the uh, to the classifier, of course based on this diagram, uh, once we pass them to this, so the model will be uh, trained based on the label document. So once we train them, we have the um, optimized model here. So next, what we want to do is we want to evaluate the classifier by using a test set. So a test set is this one. So that is the test set. So for the test set, it said um, this is also a subset of document with no intersection with training set, which means that in the earlier, so this is your training set, this is your training. So the remaining of the document will be used for testing so there is no overlapping between the testing and training data set okay. so classes to document is predefined by human specialists so as i mentioned just now when we uh, label them um, if we look at this this diagram, so this test set is um, already label. So pre we have predefined label for all the document that we have. Okay. So the evaluation is done in two step process. Okay, the first one is we use classifier to assign classes to document in test set. 
And then what we want to do next is compare the classes assigned by classifier with those specified by human specialists. Okay. So this is what I mentioned just now here. Well, see that. Uh, so the Sini, um, for the test set, we will have the actual class and also we have the predicted class. So the actual class is given by human being and the pre, uh, predicted class will will come from the classifier. So we want to compare like, how, um, how many percentage that give you the same value for the class. Okay, so that's what it meant here. Uh, first, the classifier will assign classes to the, do the document. And then the second thing is we compare the classes assigned by classifier and also by human being. And this is how it looks like. Um, first, we have the document in the test set. And of course, we have, when we process this one, of course, we have all the feature that we have for the document. And then when we classify them, the classifier will give the class label for all the document. Okay, so this is all your test that test that So th this is all already um, predefined. So by human being, so we want to compare them. We want to compare whether uh, the same document belong to the same class or not. Okay. So this is what we refer to accuracy. Okay. Okay, so um, in supervised algorithm, uh, once classifier has been trained and validated, so once we have the trained model, so we can use that one to classify new and unseen document. Okay. Uh, if the classifier is well tuned or well trained, we might have a high accuracy. Okay. So the classification is highly effective. We can say that. So having to know the process and all the process involved, uh, we will look into two of the supervised text classification algorithm. Okay. Um, this is just the general uh, process involved in supervised algorithm. But we want to know here what happened here. Um, actually, yeah. So we want to know what happened actually here. How do we learn the model. Okay. Saya lari dulu 10 round. This is what we want to know, what happened inside. Okay. Any question? If semua okay, can you type number one? Before we proceed to decision three. Okay. 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 Now we got to decision three classifier. So, um, like I mentioned just now, um, we use what the training set can to. Uh, build classification rules. So what we want to do is we want to use the um, trending set to construct the tree. So the tree path um, used to classify document outside training set. So which means that uh, once we construct the tree, we will use that tree to classify document um, that belong to the test set. So that's why he said outside training set, which means we are referring to the 
testing set. Okay, okay um, for the rules that we have, uh, this is amendable to human interpretation, uh, faci facilitated interpretation of result. So the rules that we get here uh, could be amended by human being based on jirang punya interpretation uh, let me give you an idea how vision tree looks like uh, this is how it looks like but let me show you a bit more here okay so we start from the root so if the document contain the word engineering, so this one is contained. So similar to this. So if if the document contain chemistry and atom, then we can classify the document as science. Or else if the document contain chemical, then we can um, put label as engineering. So this is what we call the leaf gun. So this is the internal node. Uh, this is the root. So so basically, this is what we we have for the the addition uh, tree. So let's go back here. Okay. So um, this is just to give you an idea uh, how the decision tree is being constructed. So for those who have taken data mining, maybe you have seen this decision tree before and also this data set. So for this data set, um, our label is this one. So we want to construct a tree based on the content of the database. So this is the attribute that we have. Okay. So this is, what do we call this? This is the, the label. Huh? Okay. So this tree allows predicting values of a given attribute. So what we want to predict is this one. So given this sunny, cool, high, uh, okay, given outlook is sunny, temperature is cold, humidity is high, and not windy. Um, what is the value of this play? Should should we play or not? Okay. So um, once we pass this one to the model, so they give us something like this. So this is the leaf. This is your leaf. So the leaf must be the, the class label. Okay, so this is the node. Uh, this is the, the attribute. And this is the value of the attributes. Okay, so this is the roots. Okay. So this is how the decision tree looks like okay so um like i mentioned just now the the internal node so this is your your internal node is supposed to be the the attribute name okay and the edges here will be the the attribute values okay and the um this one traversal of this entry um this arrow will give you the value for the attribute play so for example like this um if i want to go no if i want to go to this class or this leaf so my path should be sunny and high so sunny and high. 
and play is no. Okay, so for this one, um, given the outlook is sunny and also the humidity is high, so the answer is no. Okay, um, the basic technique that we want to perform here is we want to perform a prediction based on scene instant. So this is your scene instant, um, sample data that you already seen. So what you want to do is you want to predict this based on this scene instant. Instant is, called, is sometimes called records or tuples. Okay, in database, normally you call records or tuples. So in database, they call it instant. Okay, so the prediction is based on uh, based on scene instant. Okay, so the new instant that violates scene pattern will lead to erroneous prediction. That means, uh, let's suppose you have this uh, tree. Um, your new instant, for example, um, let's suppose this is sunny and we have the overcast here, right? but in here we do not have overcast. Okay, so what happen if the sunny here you can take on an overcast? because overcast is one of the value for the outlook. But when we look at this decision tree, we do not have any value for the um, overcast. So for that, we are not able to classify this. So in building the tree, it is important for you to cover um, all the values that we have. The overcast is here. Okay, um, let's suppose we don't have this one. Then this model cannot be used. But if we do have, then that is that is fine. So the overcast is over here. Okay, so that one is just the example. Okay, let's suppose we do not have the. The, the overcast here, then we have the value for the outlook overcast, then this tree cannot be used. Okay, um, so it is important for you to give a complete database uh, that can be used for the training of the decision tree. Okay, um, so now we look into the splitting process. Um, how do we choose this one? How do we choose? Let me erase this one first. How do we choose the node? Oh, okay. Um, why not we choose Windy first? Or why not we choose humidity first? Okay. And also in performing the splitting, how far that we need to go down here? How many level? Okay. Sometimes you have a tree something like this. So this is what we call imbalance tree. Okay. So this uh, this is not recommended. I think in your uh, data structure, you also learn how to balance the tree. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to have a balanced tree. So for this one, the depth is only two. The depth for this one is four. So we do not want to go deeper here. So that's why we prefer to have a more balanced tree. Okay. Um, so in building the tree, 
what we want to do first is we want to select one of the attribute. Okay, one of the attribute to become the root. And we will not pick the one that contain the label. So in our example, we have the play attribute. So we do not want to have this one. Okay, once we get the attribute, then we decide how many unique value that we have, and then we will split them. Okay, and then that's it. And this one, we will repeat again, uh, choosing another attribute, and then we choose how many unique value that we have. Okay, so th the issue now is which one we should put first here. Yeah. Okay, that one we will worry later on. So this is the example. Uh, for example, like uh, if we choose Outlook, we will have three unique values, and these are the, the record number that we have. So we assign the record number to the right path. And then later on, we choose humidity here, and we have high and normal. We split again, and so on. So we will have finally this one. Okay. So that is the process of splitting. We choose the attribute to be uh, put in the node, and then we pick the number of unique values for that particular attribute, then we split them. Okay. Um, this is what I mentioned just now. Um, Balance or near balance tree are more efficient for predicting attribute values. So we want to have a more balance. And the the idea is, or rule of thumb, we want to reduce the average path length. Path length means the, the depth of your decision uh, tree. We want to reduce the number of steps for you to go from the root down to the, the class leaf. Okay, um, so if you have the idea, um, for your information, this data is for relational database. So how actually we map this one to document? Okay, so for document classification, um, we have each internal node associate an index term. So like I, I mentioned just now here, so each the internal node will be the index term. Okay, so this is the index term, the internal node. Okay. And with each leaf associate a document class. This one is supposed to be F. So this is your leaf. Okay. So this is the class. And with each age associate binary predicates that indicate present or absent of index term. So, so that means um, if the document contain this, then you go here. If the document contain this, it goes here and so on. Okay, but if your document only consists this one, so you will stuck here. There is no class label. Okay, so for that, um, we will define a few term. So we will have a, a vertex V, a set of nodes. So a set of nodes. So all of these nodes. Like, um, not this one. So we only have three nodes. And we also have the tree. So the tree is constructed based on the vertex, the edges, and the root of the tree. Okay. So um, for the edges, it will be consists of two vertex. 
so they will connect two vertex and these edges where the vi will be the father and the vj will be the child so if we look at this one so this is the father and this is the child and this is the e that we have okay and the root is also belong to uh, the vertex and this is called the root and i is the internal node so so i is the internal node and also we have this uh, i complement with this set of all leaf nodes so which is this one so this is i complement okay so again um we will define also k which is set of index term of a document collection so this is the keyword that we have and also we have c for set of all classes and p set of logical predicates on the index term so um this logical predicate is basically related to the item that we have here so it is part of the um, if we talk about sentence logical predicate is something that uh, explain about the object for, for example I am walking so walking is the uh, term the um, term that we use to describe I'm so P is a set of logical predicates that we have. So finally, we have this decision tree. So decision tree will have the vertex, the edge, the root, the internal uh, node, the leaf node, which is the class, and also we have the um, a function that associate with each edge of the tree, a logical predicate from P. So, so that is and we look back at this one so we are looking at this so this is uh, for example like this the document contain so contain chemistry and contain something so this one is just to show the this document have this chemistry lah. okay so this is what we call logical predicate so that is the definition of decision tree. Okay. Um, so how do we construct this tree? So by looking at this process, we basically choose an attribute. And based on the attribute ch chosen, we look at the value that we have. Okay. So that is the first process. The second process, we repeat the same thing again. We choose the attribute and then find the unique value. So this is uh, sometimes we call it recursive procedure or repetitive procedure. So we repeat, we repeat until um, until we have all the member in each leaf to have. A single class okay. so for example like this we can check whether all the class of four six eight ten belong to the same class or not if not we split them again and then we check again whether all the member in each of the leaf node contain a single class or not if not we go again if not we will stop there So uh, similar to the, the previous example just now, first, the first step is we associate all document with the root. So we start from the root. 
we start from the root here. Okay. And the second step is to select index term that provide a good separation of the document. So uh, in this example, we choose A, B, C, and H. And then we separate the document. Okay. And then uh, later on, we have D and then E and then R. Uh, what is that? F and G. Okay. So we will further divide them here. Um, this is D, E, R, G. I think F, G. Okay. So we will use the recursive procedure to keep breaking them until we find a single class that group them together. Okay. So now um, the question is, how do we pick this keyword? Okay. How do we pick that key, uh, keyword? So for that one, we will use information gain, ataupun entropy. So you have studied this one before, huh? So um, in selecting the term with high information gain, we tend to increase the number of branches at a given level. So, so that means um, in order for us to have a high information gain, we need to have high number of branches and then at the same time reduce number of document in each resultant subset and then we yield smaller and less complex uh, decision tree so so we do not want to have um, deeper decision tree or so many branches so what we want to do is well, we want to have a smaller and less complex decision tree Okay, and how do we measure this? How do we use IG? Uh, this one looks familiar. Huh? So, I think you have used this one before. Pernah gunakan? Okay, so um, for the entropy, so the entropy measure the homogeneity of the node, like um, how pure is the node that you have, because the aim is you want to have all the member in the leaf uh, node to have the same uh, label. Okay. So we want to use the entropy. So for the entropy, we will look at this, this part. Uh, this part is the relative frequency of class J, uh, class J at that particular node T. Okay, so um, this one, the maximum value is one, where we have um, X number belong to the same level, and also we have the number of label to be X. Lah. Um, we will go over the, the examples on. So these two are the same. Okay. So for the entropy, they use the uh, relative frequency of class J at node T. Okay. okay, for example, like this. Um, the way we read this one is that we have two branches and for uh, class 1, we have 0, and then for class 2, we have 6, okay? So, in order for us to compute the entropy, so we start with the minus here, okay? and then for for class C1, for, this is class C1, so we have zero out, 0 out of 6, so 0 lah, okay? So for class 2, we have 6 over 6, okay? Because the total number of data that we have is 6. So this one is 6 over 6. So when we compute 
So this one is zero. So, so that means very pure. So the, the entropy is zero. Um, in another example, we have one and five. Okay. So the relative frequency of class C1 is one over six. The relative frequency of class two will be five over six. So we just substitute this one here and then this one here. So notice that we only have two classes here, uh, class one and class two. So in case if you have more than two classes, for example, if you have class three, then you have to add one more here. Okay. So once we use, um, once we completed this one, then we get point six five. So notice that we are using log base two. So we compute this one first, and then plus this. So this is for class one, and this is for class two. And we get point six five. And then in another example, we have two and four. So the relative frequency of class one will be two over six. The six is the total number of data that we have here. And then for class two, we have four over six. And once we compute it, this is the value of the entropy. So notice that um, from here going to here, if we have a 50-50 content of class one and class two, you will have the entropy to become one. If you have three and three, your entropy will be one. So uh, from zero to one. Okay, so we can say that the smaller the entropy, the more homo homogeneous your data is in that particular node. Okay. So um, what we can say that if we have a branch like this, that split class 1 to 0 and class 2 to 6, so this is better. Compared to this, so if we have a branch that split them into uh, class 1 and class 2, but this is 2 and this is 4, so this is not good huh? because the entropy is high. So we want to have smaller entropy. Okay, that's how we uh, choose which attribute that we want to use first. So we want to have uh, attribute that can split your data that has highest entropy. Okay. So this is only for a single branches like this. Okay. Um, if you have multiple branches, then we will have to compute them different, differently in here. Um, and at the same time, we can compute the IG here. This is the information gain. So this is before and after. So this is before and after. Okay. Uh, let me show you the example for that. Okay, so this is how we apply entropy, and this is how uh, the actual um, computation of which attribute should be used. Okay, so for example, like this, um, we choose the keyword A, B, and C. Okay. So we have 18 document, and we have in this 18 document, 15 of them belong to class 1. And 3 of them belong to class 2. So if we use the keyword A, B, and C, um, for this node, we have 6 class 2. For this node, we have 5 class 2 and 1 class 1. And then for this node, we have 4 class 2 and so on. So uh, notice that we, we already 
computed the entropy for all this in this example, which is 0, 0.65 and 0.92. Okay, so how do we compute? Um, so for the e uh, initial entropy, so for initial entropy, we just take this 15 and 3. So 15 is for the class 1 and then 3 for the class 2. And we compute this one. Okay. And um, we know that the entropy for each of the nodes is 0 0.65 and 0 0.92. So we just plug in this value here. Since we have three nodes, so we should have three part here. Okay. And we also have the, the weightage. So the weightage here just show you how many um, portion of the data that we have here. So this is 6 over 18. We have 18 document here. So only 6 is here. So similar to this, similar to that one here. And when we solve the problem, we get 0.53. So the gain is before minus the after, we get information gain of 0.12. So what we want to do is we want to maximize this. The larger the value, the better is your know, splitting. Okay, if you look at this another example now, um, this one is we use A, B, C, keyword A, B, C. Uh, in this example, we use keyword C, D, F. So for C, D, F, they give you different di distribution. So for example, this one we have 9, this is 5 and 4. So in this example, um, we have more pure data belong to one node okay? and similar to this one and when we compute this one so this is 9 over 18 because we have 9 document out of 18 here so 0 0.92 and then the rest is 5 over 18 4 over 18 and we compute and our IG is this one so what we can say that it is better to split UCDF compared to ABC in order to construct the tree for um, document classification. Okay. So your assignment is this one. Very easy. So you have 20 document, uh, 10 class 1 and 10 class 2. Okay, find this and find the IG. Okay, any question? So, okay. Okay, okay. so. So, um, the time now is 5 p.m. So, I will stop here. Um, we will continue again on Monday um, for the K and N. Okay. Okay, so, we will continue again on Monday. So um, while still fresh on your mind um, about the lecture, I suggest you do the assignment and submit. Okay.